Connections from patch panel to switch. By the time we're done here, you will understand the best way to connect your patch panels to switches. At this point, I'm going to assume that you've seen a couple nuggets from the IT Expertise Installing Cabling and Network Devices series. Fishing some cable, selecting a patch panel, patching in your first location, and installing a wall jack. Essentially, I want you to have the big picture of how wall jacks throughout an office environment and all the network cable that feeds them connects up to the patch panel. So I'm taking us back to the office space that we acquired and fully cabled in the previous series. We're going to build on that foundation of physical cabling and move into that realm of switches. So I'm going to pick up right about here. All right, we're back in the office of the shirt printing company where we filmed the last series. Let's head into the MDF where we can take a look at the switch to patch panel connections. Now this is the MDF that we actually built before where... Ah! What is this? We just had this thing all beautiful a week ago and take a look at this. Somebody is running cables out the front of it to... What? What's going on? There's servers. Let's turn this into a learning lesson. You may have the most beautiful cabling setup, but if you don't have a policy that everybody follows and you've got multiple IT people in the office, this is bound to happen. Everybody has different standards and somebody thought it was okay. Now, okay, now somebody may have, have done this in just like a lab kind of thing. Maybe they're just putting a, a computer here to test some things or something like that. But, but if you don't step in front of this, this is going to stay this way, and it won't be long before you have more stuff dangling here. And look at look at this. There's servers now sitting on top of this. Cables run right here. I don't know if the power is actually plugged into anything that it should be. I'm kind of freaking out. I feel like the three bears. Take a look at this. There's wire nuts all over the place. Who's been messing with my oatmeal? You know what I mean? It's like somebody has come in and just started leaving stuff all around anyway. A long time ago, someone said, Jeremy, I don't think you have respect for management. And I honestly didn't back then. Now I do. I realize how essential it is to have management in place that can make sure this kind of thing doesn't happen. Well, let's get back to what we're actually here to accomplish. You remember in the last nugget, we went through and we did cable management on this entire thing. Uh, we've got this Panduit cable organizer. Matter of fact, let's just rip that entire thing off right there. Uh, where we've got the patch panel connections, which are the physical connections coming in from the office. So these patch panels behind them run to these spools of cable that actually go through the ceiling to each individual wall jack uh, and feed all of the connectivity in the building. Now, the patch panels themselves don't do anything. They need to be connected to a switch which provides the intelligence to make the network work. We'll talk a lot more about that in just a second. Now, the strategy that we followed when we connected these things was a one-to-one -one mapping. We took port one on the patch panel, connected it to port one of the switch, port two of the patch panel, port two of the switch, and so on and so on, all the way through port 24 to where we literally packed out the core 24 ports of this switch with one-to-one -one mappings of the patch panel. I'll put this cover back over that. The other strategy that you could take is to just patch in what you need. Meaning, maybe you don't have the wall jacks of 13 through 18 connected to anything, so you say, you know what, I'm not actually going to wire those to the switch right now. We'll connect those when we have a need for them. And that means that five or six jacks somewhere in your building will not function if somebody plugs a device into it. And that really leads you to this question. When you do your patch panel to switch connections, are you gonna go the CapEx route or the OpEx route? I'm going to give you some material right now that will really impress your CFO. CapEx stands for capital expenditures. That typically refers to things that you buy, upfront costs, if you will. This took some capital expenditure. We had to buy not one, but two switches. We had to buy cable management. We had to buy enough patch cables to patch in every single one of those patch panel ports. It also took a little bit more upfront time to implement this. Then to do it this way, which has a lot of operating expenditure. Now, I know you might be looking at the picture and be like, well, obviously the CapEx way is the right way to go. And I would say, yeah, but sometimes it's very difficult to get there. I've got to confess, this is actually the MDF that we built in the previous series together. This is the IDF of the adjacent suite to this building. Full confession time, I'm going to throw this out there. I've been showing you a picture of this office suite, and it looks all nice and compact, and you got all the little offices. There's our MDF, there's the shirt company, and all that kind of stuff. But I haven't shown you that this is actually connected to another office space that's probably 100 feet down the way. It's a bigger office space, and in there is a little mop closet where this exists. Now, I'm not going to take full responsibility for that. I didn't implement this network, but I can tell you how it got there. 
And I can tell you that I've actually stared at it for the last two years and I haven't done anything about it. See, operating expenditure is the intangible costs, our time, that doesn't usually show up in the balance sheet just like a switch does. People don't usually criticize 10 to 15 minute increments like they do a 1,000 or 2,000 or $10,000 switch purchase. But here's how this happened. When the organization moved into this office space, it was a small company. They had a lot more network jacks than they needed. And being that they were trying to protect their capital expenditures, they bought a switch that was not large enough to handle all of the ports on that patch panel. So they just plugged in what they needed. And you can barely see it right there. There's one that's not plugged in. There's another empty one right there. Uh, I think there's a couple right there that are not plugged in. We could go through and analyze that patch panel on that dimly lit picture, but you get the idea, right? Things are plugged in in whatever order they wanted to plug them in just to address the need of the moment. Now, over the last two years, this organization has grown. New person next comes in and says, hey, I've got a new computer. Someone walks into this room and goes, oh, uh, well, okay. It takes me about 15 minutes to tone out that wall jack right there and figure out which patch panel port it is. And, and then another five minutes to plug that in and find a cable because we don't have cables easily accessible. And so it just you know ends up like another little loop like that that is plugged into the switch and it works. Okay, that person just sat down. Oh, and that the person that was there had to move to a different spot over here and we got to do another little 15 minute increment of time to try and figure out what's going on it's the opex way a little 15 minute here a little 15 minute there doesn't seem like much especially when we compare it to buying another two thousand dollar switch up front oh well, the opex way must be cheaper right i think we both know the answer to that opex is like a drug just a little hit here and there man won't hurt you just say no billy because what's happened over the years, it's become a mess. And you know what we're waiting for to clean this all up? A major outage. When everything goes down and we look at this mess and we have no idea where to even begin and it takes us down for half a day instead of five minutes like we should have been down if we would have had everything correctly documented to begin with. And after that half day, something comes true that you've probably heard before. People don't change until the pain to stay the same exceeds the pain to change. This kind of network is just waiting for an event so painful that a manager, a director, even VP level or CEO walks in and says, that's it. This ends now. And you have to schedule a weekend to come in and redo everything so it looks this way. When really, if you would have gone the CapEx way, it would have cost a little bit more up front, but saved so much expense in the long run that no one even remembers that upfront cost. The only other thing I'll mention here is that you can go in the direction of two different strategies when connecting your patch panel ports to the switch itself, whether you go the capital expenditure or operating expenditure route. And you know what I just noticed? What is that? Is that a tip of an ethernet cable hanging through there? Heads will roll. But back to the discussion at hand. You can take all 24 ports of that patch panel and line them up and connect them directly to that switch one through 24 on there. Or you can go function based. For example, maybe you know that this, this, and this connects to wireless access points, and this, this connects to wireless access points. And you can say, well, I want ports, you know, 20 through 25 or 6, you know, well, actually, it's 24 ports up here. So let's just say 1 through 5 uh, to be the wireless access point ports. And so you run those five patch panel ports to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or something like that on the switch. I actually used to do that, but I've learned over time that going the function-based route, like blocking off certain chunks of your switch for certain functions, clients, wireless access points, IP phones, servers, and you're plugging them into specific sections of that switch, ends up being more wasteful and confusing. And honestly, in the long run, it just doesn't work. You might have five wireless access points in your building right now, and maybe you even save an extra port for an extra one, which is kind of wasteful because it's not being used. But then a year later, you find out that you need two extra wireless access points, but you've already packed all of this up with servers. And that just leads to violating your own conscience because you're like, well, in this one case, I'm just going to take this one from the IP phone section and let's make that the wireless access point. So we'll just have an exception in this case. So uh, you, you see where this goes, right? Over time, the function-based patching just falls apart. Now, coming back to the rack, there's something else I want to draw your attention to. We have two rows of patch panel ports, one through 24 up top, 25 through 48 down at the bottom. Now, up top, I have a 28 port Cisco SG300 switch. Don't worry about the model numbers right now. I'll talk about those a little bit later. Down at the bottom, I have the same thing, a Cisco SG300 28 port switch. 
This top row of patch panel ports goes to the top switch. The bottom row of patch panel ports goes to the bottom switch. But the big question I want to ask you right now is how should those switches be connected together? That, my friend, is a topic for the next nugget. Oh yeah, I've seen real-time TV shows. I know how they get you to tune in again. Now, I promised at the beginning of this nugget that you will understand the best way to connect your patch panels to your switches. And I hope by the time we're done here, you'll get that and so much more. I want to do a practical exercise with you to get your network design blood flowing. So read through the following scenario. Sketch a basic network diagram showing the switch connections that will accommodate the situation presented. So here's our scenario, the swimming pool company. You've been brought into a swimming pool company in a strip mall to install the needed cabling and network components to deliver internet access to the devices, which includes PCs, tablets, and smartphones at the location. The customer currently has a point of sales terminal and a few tablets the employees use when assisting customers and recording the inventory. All the cabling for the location runs to the back office room behind the manager's desk. That's beyond there. Sketch the network infrastructure into the floor plan below, identifying where the switch should go and the needed cables that should be installed to reach the devices. There's the floor plan. So here's specifically what I want you to identify. What size of patch panel are you going to install? They've got eight port, 12 port, 24 port, 48 port, and larger patch panels. Which size of switch would you install? They've got eight port, 10 port, 24 port, and larger switches. What other devices would you install? And lastly, sketching on this picture right here, where would you run the cables? Over there is our point of sale system. I'm using this exercise to get your blood flowing from the first IT expertise series, the installing cabling and devices, as well as framing your mindset around the topics that we just discussed. So pause the video, grab a blank piece of paper and take a stab at this. I've got to warn you, it may feel trivial. You may be thinking to yourself right now, I'm just going to sit back and keep watching because Jeremy's going to give me the answer. And you're right, I will give you the answer in a moment, but you won't grow in your knowledge anywhere near as much as if you just took five to 10 minutes and tried this yourself. So pause the video now. And hopefully you did, because here I go. I'm about to give you what I would do for this situation. Now keep in mind, there's no 100% right answer. There's not even enough information in this scenario to fully answer this question. I'm trying to build your gut instinct. If I were to grab a patch panel here, I would grab a 24 port patch panel. I know you may be thinking, well, there's only a point of sale terminal, but I'm also thinking about the wireless access point. I'm also thinking this phone uh, store probably, this phone store, this, this swimming pool store probably needs a phone system. If they go with voice over IP, that's gonna eat up a number of ports there. It's a swimming pool company. What do I know about swimming pools? They may have weird widgets. They might have IP surveillance cameras. They may have security systems and alarms that are attached to the network. I rarely go below a 24 port patch panel. The only time I've done it was when I did some cabling for an antique store. When you walked in the door, it literally smelled and felt like grandma's house. And as much as I tried to impress and amaze grandma who ran the store, with all the technology that she could integrate to increase the efficiency of her sales, <laughs> she wasn't interested. Thus, I used an eight port patch panel and it still sits there half used to this day. On the switch, I would grab a 24 port switch, or I actually really love those 28 port switches from Cisco. They give you some extra bonus ports because they know you're probably gonna fill it up with the patch panel, punching all the cables in. There's a little extra there for the internet router, for the server sitting behind the manager's desk. Again, we don't have all the information of what other devices are they using in this situation. Device-wise, I know they need at least one wireless access point. Those tablets and smartphones aren't gonna plug into ethernet cable, at least not well. Now in terms of cabling, this is where I may differ on the approach that you took, or maybe you and I are united in mind. I would run two cables to the wireless access point, and I would run four cables up here to this point of sale terminal at the desk. I would install a little wall outlet, you know, a little keystone jack with four outlets on it. There's only a description of one point of sale terminal, but I'm thinking ahead that there may be one of those little credit card processing machines. They may want an IP phone sitting on the desk and maybe none of those things are there right now, but look at that store. Do you think you and I are going to set up a little desk over here in the corner and come in there on a daily basis? Probably not. So let's set this thing up with enough cabling that down the road, if they call us and they need more, they simply need to plug it in. Now I ran two to the wireless access points, or I should say wireless access point, because if something goes wrong with that cable in the future, maybe it gets yanked out of the back of the patch panel. Maybe it just stops working. 
I want to be able to talk to them over the phone and have them move their patch cable from one port to the other to see if we can get that wireless access point to power on. Excellent. Hopefully that got your mindset going and your blood flowing in terms of how to design and cable a small business. In the next nugget, we're going to explore the switching platforms and the best way to add more than one switch to your environment. It's not as easy as you think. For now, I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.